My name is Christy Busby, and you are about to listen to the next episode of my podcast called Fate, From Atheism to Enlightenment. So come on in, join me. We're going to talk about it all, from atheism to enlightenment. Alrighty, guys, here we go. Get ready, and welcome to your fate. Welcome, everyone, to the next episode of Fate. How's everybody doing today? On today's episode, I am bringing you Kathleen Reddy Diane. She has a book out called Before We Are Born. We're going to be talking all things soul connections, soul mates, and soul contracts. I'm very excited to have her on the show. Welcome to your fate, Kathleen. How are you doing today? Hi, Christy. Thank you so much. It's it's lovely to meet you and to be on your show. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with me today. I really appreciate it. I'm excited to hear about your book and your spiritual journey. How about we start at the beginning and why don't we talk a little bit about how your spiritual awakening, your journey began? Okay. Um, well, there are a lot of different things that happened along the way, but to kind of uh, give you a I think a nice little recap. Um, I I think for a lot of people, it's a death in our lives that really makes us, um, you know, begin to question. And uh, we're in this raw, raw feeling of grief. And um, in some ways, we're open. You know, we're open. And uh, I I lost one of my sisters very um, abruptly, and. When she passed, of course, I was grieving and just, you know, questioning, like, you know, where she was. But I'd always had some kind of a spiritual sense about life, but I really didn't have a sense about where her soul was. And um, she left two kids and um, it was it was a real, you know, um, hardship for our family. And um, one night I was sleeping and I had this extraordinary dream, um, something I, I now think of as a vision, um, I could see myself during this dream in the, in the bed. I could see the clothes I was wearing that I'd worn to bed. And, um, I could also see the perspective from where I was laying on the, on the bed. So it's sort of this, um, you know, this whole surround kind of vision. And, um, I saw her walk in and she had two people standing behind her and I couldn't see their faces. Um, if I had to guess, I'd say they were male, but I'm not sure. And it, it really doesn't matter. But I could only see this outline of light around them. And she came right over and she sat on the bed and she held my hand. And I could feel her holding my hand. And she was talking to me about her children and, you know, to be, you know, to stay close with them and to help them. And she said, you know, I have to be, I have to go right now, but I don't want you to think that I've left because I'm, she, there was something in, um, I don't know exactly how she said it, but essentially she had to go someplace to learn something. There was more work she had to do. And, uh, but she said, I'm coming back after I do that. So I watched her, I felt her let go of my hand and I watched her walk out the wall next to me out into which led right outside and the two guides went right out after her um that was a wake-up call that story gave me chills not only because i have two sisters myself and i can't imagine the impact of losing one of them it would be like losing my heart you know yes exactly yeah, i mean i i it's yeah, it was it was a devastating loss. But I, I can tell you the opposite side, just to give you a little um, a little info. I had her daughter here today with her new twin babies. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, and there's a whole miraculous story to that. And she's done. Excuse me. She's done very well. Um, and she's she has spoken to her mom through me, through my mediumship. So um, anyway, that was the beginning. That was how how things opened up and how I, I opened up. Exactly. Now, looking back on that episode now, 
Do you see yourself, do you feel like that was sort of an out of body experience for you since you kind of, con your consciousness seemed to kind of rise up out of you and you were able to gain a perspective almost like many people speak of during a near death experience where they're out of their body and they're looking down at their bed and they can see everything that's going on clear as day, people working on them. It sounds very similar to you, even though you were dreaming, yeah. but a very similar experience as, as a near death experience. It sounded just from your perspective of your vision. You know, I think there's a similarity. Yeah. Um, I didn't completely, I wasn't above looking wow. down. Um, so maybe not exactly the same. I have had experiences, particularly when I started really chasing becoming a medium, which I did, and um, just, you know, really fiercely meditating. And I, I did a lot of things to, you know, kind of get myself where I wanted to be. And during that time, some of the messages I, I was hearing were about that I could leave my body. If I wanted to leave my body, I could do that. And I tried it when I was awake a couple of times and I could feel this sort of this feeling of like lifting. You feel like there's a lightness, you know, and then I would get nervous and it would go boom and I'd feel it come back. I don't know if you've had the experience, but um, it's just, it's certainly. I'm definitely, it's certainly new with the meditation game, but at, at most what I have achieved so far, and I'm still working on it, is I get full body energy tingling from my toes to my head. Um, so yeah. I feel that something is happening, but I have never experienced anything like an out of body experience or even a lucid dream where I'm having some sort of experience of that nature. Um, that is fascinating. I let's talk about um, the next step in your journey after losing your sister and having that experience was it your internal pull? Was it your desire to have another interaction with your sister? What 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 led you to open up to spirituality, mediumship in general? It was a little bit after that, like maybe maybe five years after. Although there were some certain things that happened, you know. This, we've had a lot of experience. My, when I say we, I mean my husband and I, because we've really sort of been on this journey together. Um, so we've had a lot of things happen, but the next really big event for me was I lost a friend from, uh, my younger years, mm -hmm. from my teenage years, and it really hit me hard. And I was surprised by it. I was really deeply grieving and I had just spoken to him a few days before and it was, it was tough. And I didn't, I was grappling with it. Like, why am I so devastated by this? And then I started getting the feeling that he was in my house. Wow. And yeah, so it was like, that was really, that was a hard thing to explain to people, you know, to say, I feel his presence here and he was there. And I'm quite, I'm quite sure of it now because I've had an opportunity to speak to him. But um, my, my husband and I went to a spiritualist church and um, have you ever been to a spiritual? I have church? not. I have not been to one yet. Okay, so if there's one near you, you might want to just. It's a fun thing to do. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a religious person. I don't, I don't follow the, anything like a specific um, religion. But um, there is a medium that works at a spiritualist church and calls on people in the audience and gives you messages. And so we went for that reason. Oh, wow. um, yeah, so it's a good experience. Um, it's very open minded, and they're you know they have principles, but they're like there's no dogma, mm -hmm. there's no rules. No one's going to throw you out of this church, you know. Um, anyway, it's it's a nice place to go. I still go once in a while. Um, and one night they were doing table tipping, which is um, where spirit actually you put your hands on the table and a small small pedestal table, and um, people in spirit actually move the table. Oh, wow. And it's wild. It really is. That, that was a, that was another big moment. Along your journey, were you just getting pulled 
continues because this is what I have found. I am myself new to the spiritual journey and, and I feel like I'm getting pulled in this direction in all kinds of ways. And I feel like once you start listening and paying attention and tuning in, that synchronicities start happening to you, things will start occurring to you that you could possibly chalk up to coincidence. But once once there's so many of them, you're like, there is something going on here, whether it's you see the numbers or you see some sort of signs that they acknowledge that you are paying attention to a, a, a different energy that, that, that resides out there in our environment. Yeah, I think that's a nice way of mm. saying it, Christy. Uh, I really don't think there's a way to grow without being open yes. to growth, you know? And so what, what you were saying was basically that once you say, all right, yes. I'm ready, I'm interested, yes. show me, show me you're there. They will show it's, you, you know, yes. um, I have had the same sensation like um, with my body, with the tingles, like you explained. And I, th I think it is, it's spirit, like really making contact with our physical body. Um, around that time, I started having the sensation of um, like, almost like someone was playing with my hair. Oh, wow. You can feel like touches on your hair or, or like spider webs on your arms or your legs. You feel like, yes. you know, and it's spirit energy. I believe that's true. I absolutely do. How did you... How did you hone into your mediumship skills? I'm always interested in how one develops the ability to become in touch with the other side in that way where you, you're starting to get messages, you're starting to communicate. What can you tell us about how you became a medium? Well, I will tell you that, let's see, there was a... Um, at that same church, I took a healing class there and there was a, um, this Native American man, he was lovely, this older gentleman, he's since passed, and he was doing a healing, um, showing me how to do a healing by laying his hands on my back. And he said, oh, you're a trance medium. And I said, no, <laughs> I'm not. And he said, you're going to be a trance medium. And I said, I I'm not really, like that just was... That was a terrifying thought to me. I'm like, oh no, I just want to see, you know, I want the clairvoyance. I want to see what people are, you know, that's what I was going for, but you don't get to choose. They choose, you know? So, um, you know, I have had some clairvoyant experiences uh, and all of it is really, I got there by meditation. Uh -huh, interesting. And it's, yeah, that's how you do it. If you want to open a channel, you meditate, you have to be disciplined about it. Um, and like, I would do it several times a day and I would speak to my spirit guide who I did not know, but I knew was there. I trusted was there. And I'd say, please, you know, help me, guide me. I want to learn to do this. And sometimes I would start to see someone, you know, I'd get an image in my mind or something like that. Um, so I've had some of that. I've had some kind of cool experiences with that, but it's really not my strength. Um, and my, my old teacher was, was right. I mean, they wanted to come through me. That's how they lined up with me. Um, I am kind of a baby. So <laughs> the idea of just letting go and letting someone come through and speak through me is, was really hard. Um, I put some reins on it and said, you can speak through me, but I'm, I need to stay conscious, mm. you know, like some mediums completely drop yep. and, um, uh, you know, like Edgar Casey. I mean, he was this, he was a famous medium and, you know, he would let them, he had full right. trust. Uh, and not in this lifetime, I don't think, but. So mm -hmm. when you say trans medium, just for my audience who isn't familiar with that term, what exactly is a trans medium? It's you, you're basically going into a trance state okay. and people in spirit can speak through your body. It, you're, why you do that is you're, you're moving your own mind out of the way so they can come through. Um, like I said, there was a back and forth with us for a long time because I learned to hear before I learned to do um, the actual speaking through. I'd pick up certain words or phrases and I'd be like, oh, okay, I know who this is. Like I'd hear 
you know, mom, mom, mom. I'm like, okay, all right, I know it's you, you're here. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and that worked pretty well. My husband's taking notes and he's, you know, helping us along. And uh, he, he's always sort of in my grounding energy. Whenever I communicate, he's always, almost always with me. Um, but they started saying that it would, they could go through me. And um, I just didn't want to let go completely. And so I just, they helped me in the beginning to sort of drop my, st- my, my level of consciousness changes mm. Um, What I've learned is that um, I once went to um, someone's house because I I very rarely, I don't do readings for people. Um, I don't, it's just a very private, it's sacred to me. Um, If someone needs help and they ask, I'll do it, you know, but uh, mostly it's been in my family and, you know, close friends and their friends. And anyway, one of my sister's friends had lost her husband and she really wanted to connect with him. So I drove I live in Massachusetts. I drove down to Cape Cod and uh, went to this house and I, I gave this woman a reading and, and connected her. And then I got in my car to drive home and I realized I don't really even know where I am. I was a little bit like <laughs> confused. I called my husband. I'm like, I kind of think I shouldn't be driving. He's like, pull over. You know, so, <laughs> so I don't do that anymore. But it, But having that experience made me realize like, oh, I am actually shifting. Like there's some, like I need to give myself time, you know, to come back up and, you know, drink a lot of water, have a little snack, kind of get myself back because you do push your own, you're pushing your own consciousness out of the way. You're, I don't know if that makes sense. It it, it does. It does. It's fascinating. It seems fantastical, but the more and more I have these conversations and read books and listen to other podcasts, the more I am a hundred percent on board and recognize and understand that we as human beings are much more powerful than we think we are. And there's much more going on within us than we acknowledge or understand or even are aware of. I, it, it is remarkable to me through my journey how much I have learned that we don't know anything. We don't know what our true capacities are in in this world. And I'm always fascinated and intrigued and want to learn more and want to find my own ability to tap into that. So I can learn my soul purpose, my, my, you know, what are we all doing here? One of the reasons why I do this podcast is because I'm fascinated with the idea of what are we all doing here? What is life on this 3d plane? And the more I talk to people who kind of can tap into the other side and give me little nuggets of truth, real truth, it is always a, a, a gift. You know, it's it's very much so a gift. Mm. Speaking of which, what can you tell me about what you have learned through your interactions with spirits from the other side? You know, it was so, you said fantastical. And I love that word because it was fantastical when this stuff started happening. And I have to tell you, it still (laughs) hits me that way sometimes. You know, it it is unbelievable, but it's true. Exactly. You know, and I think you hit it, you know, on the head when you said, you know, we don't really know. We don't know what our abilities are. Um, so I guess, you know, how much are we just scratching the surface? I, I don't honestly know. Um, but some of the things that really wowed me were, um, you know, the amount of love yes. that surrounds us. I mean, I yeah, it's unbelievable. It's like, in the end, all this really comes down yes. to is love. You know, and I really think that now it just clarified that for me that I people were stepping in to speak to me or to whoever I'm with to speak to us because they love us and they're still here loving us and giving us these messages of hope and and support and you know oh we're so proud that you did this or that and it's just like mind blowing you know people that you thought you lost forever you know my my sister or my parents they're you know 
it's it's unbelievable. But um, so yes, and also um, I had a spirit guide I was working really closely with for a while, and one night I I sort of said to him, and I wasn't in a session or anything. I just used to kind of throw things out to him, you know, and I said, you know something I was doing, I felt uncomfortable about it. And I wasn't sure. And, and he said, what are you worried about? And I'm like, I'm worried about sin. And he said, there's no such thing as sin. He said, all you can do is love everyone around you the best that you can. And you're not the, you know, you're not the first person that has said things of that ilk where, I talk a lot about religion on this podcast. You know, it is called From Atheism to Enlightenment. I I was an atheist my whole life. I never really believed in the the religious dogma that had been uh, thrust upon me from when I was a child. I never rang true to me. I never understood it. I, it never felt right to me. And the more and more I dance in spirituality, the more and more I am very much convinced that there is nothing but love after this. You go back to a sense of being enveloped in a kind of love and a sense of home and a sense of being completely uh, submerged in peace and love. And there isn't really much beyond that. I, I don't believe that people go to hell. I don't believe that we are punished. I don't believe that... Um, I just feel like the Bible has been manipulated in a way for more power and control in fear than it has ever been here to give us peace, hope, and a sense of community in our, in our, I feel like it's, it's divided us more than it's ever brought people together. Yes. Yeah. I agree with absolutely everything you just said. Um, and I was raised Catholic, I, so I understand. Yeah, I was raised Christian, and I was uh, I went to church three times a week up until the time I was in high school. And as soon as I could tap out, I I did, and I stepped away from any kind of real uh, belief in an afterlife. And and I I got a degree in science, and I very much was of the mindset that if you couldn't see it, touch it, taste it, smell it, it didn't exist. There was no afterlife that we were just, we lived and we died and there was nothing more to us. And the more it took a health crisis for me to open myself up to different ways of believing and different perspectives. And I truly believe that people do need to be shaken to awaken. I think it does take certain level of trauma, certain level of losing who you think you are in order for you to open your mind to being something else and believing something else. And I kind of had that journey and now I'm expanding on it and learning every single day more and more by talking to people about what their life journey has been, what their spiritual awakening has been. And I also feel like there's tons of people out there having their own awakening and Mm -hmm. not everybody is going to receive, um, it's, it's not always going to be a welcomed thing, you know, for instance, did you right. have any kind of pushback from family members or friends when you started adopting your role as a mediumship and having these experiences? Like what kind of. Yeah, I was really nervous. Yes, to tell I'm people. sure. <laughs> I mean, I was a practicing attorney <laughs> when this happened. So yeah, it's clearly not going to make the announcement to the law firm, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's just I picked and choose, you know, chose who who I thought could uh, just sort of have an open yes. mind to it, and uh, you know, I showed my sisters first. Yes, I still have three sisters on on this earth. I have three, and uh, so I showed them first, and they were like, "Oh, okay," you know, you you kind of have to experience yes. something, you know, to understand, especially when you're talking about something that it just seems so. F- you know, far it does. It, it does not seem yeah. within the realm of possibility because we are pro it's, 
we are programmed not to be able to accept things like this. We are taught from a very young age that this kind of stuff is meant to, it, it, you know, it's poo-pooed, it's you're crazy, it's in your head, and it's not. It's a real, absolutely real thing, and more and more people are recognizing it, opening up to, to it, and using it not only to broaden their perspective on what and who we are, but also to heal themselves, to heal others, to love each other more, to experience compassion, yes. to experience empathy, and to understand that we are all connected here. We are all connected and, and we all have a purpose. And I'm, you know, yeah. I'm all in, I'm all in. Um, let's talk a little bit about what a soul connection is or what a soul contract is and what what you've learned in that department. So I, I'll, I'll step back just a moment to preface it because um, one of the things I learned a lot about was reincarnation. Mm. And that plays into your yeah. question because the people who are in our lives, um, most of whom... They're here that we knew them before we were born into this life. So the idea of a soul contract, although I will tell you, I've never heard that word from my spirit mm -hmm. friends. I've heard it other places, but they do talk to, you know, they have spoken to me quite a bit about the fact that we all play a role in planning what's going to happen when you get here um, and the people that you're going to travel with. Um, there are some people that, you know, for whatever reason that we can't understand at the time, we don't have the whole time. Sometimes they depart early. They go back, you know, they're, they're, they die and they, you know, you don't expect it. They do, you know, or you don't meet them until you're, you know, you're 45 or something and you, you know, you bump into someone and you feel this, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's different. Every soul connection is different. And I think that they, that each of them have a purpose and some of it might just be pure, com you know, companionship because these are people we, we travel with, so to speak, you know, and some of it is, um, you know, this is somebody who's going to play a role that I'm not going to like, but I know it ahead of time. They're going to do something that's going to really, really like piss me off, or it's going to really feel like they threw me off my path, but they're really jerking you into a place where you need to be. Mm -hmm. You know, so we can't see, you know, that's the problem. You know, when you're, you're here in this body, you don't, you don't have the vision that you have when you're a pure soul. Uh, so there's lots, there's a lot that goes on before we get here. It's, it is a, one of the things about being in this 3D plane, swimming in this reality is our, our need that we need to forget who we are, that we have no recognition, we have no memory, and we have no ability to understand coming into this world that we, that there is a plan, that there is a reason why we're here, that everything, from what I'm understanding, from what I've learned, it almost feels like, you know, the earth is a bit of a learning. You're here to grow and expand and learn. Yes. And when you come back, everyone here is supposed to be working on certain things and it's predetermined and you do all of your negotiations before you reincarnate here in the physical form. And when you are here, you come in as a clean slate with no memory of your prior lives, with no ability to um, have a prior navigation system. It is, it is, you hit the ground running and you, you should be guided or we as humans, I believe should be more paying attention to our intuition, to our inner self, to our inner feelings. But, but we do tend to rely on our outer senses, which, yes. you know, may or may not lead us down the right path or make, make us allow us to make the right turns at the right time. And I think many people get off their sole purpose or their timeline or whatever you want to say, because they are not listening to their inner guidance or their intuition or that feeling that all of us have. 
that many of us ignore. <laughs> yes. I, you know, it's tricky. It is. It is. A, it's tricky. And one of the things, you know, you were talking about a few minutes ago about atheism. Yes. And uh, I think I understand atheism. I understand how people get there because in my mind, I, I, I know that I'm not that smart. There are people on this planet who are really, really right. They know a whole lot more than I do, yep. you know, and they're saying there isn't, but you know, there isn't anything more, but here's the thing. It's like, we're not just a mind. Like the, to me, the brain is just, it's the most important tool that we, we think that we have to get through the, you know, through this life. But I think just as important is that, that yes. intuition, that yes. gut, you know, and my, my intuition has always told me this more than this. You know, I've always felt that. I mean, for me, it was, it, it took a lot of trauma. It took a lot of, quite frankly, I, I was so sick that when I started turning to other ways to uh, heal myself, and I also started doing plant medicine journeys, when you start going down into uh, doing ayahuasca, sitting sitting in a mushroom ceremony, and you're you end up having visions and having full on conversations and, and having these experiences that will, you know, will change your ever loving mind once you awaken and you understand that that is leading you to your healing or that has helped you in some way. Then you can really start expanding on uh, your ability to see the world with a different lens on your eyeballs and you start understanding we are so much more than what we think we are. And I say many, many, many times on this show that one of the things that I have tried to do on the daily is be very conscious of what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling and what I'm saying, because I truly believe that we manifest that we are co-creators of our universe, of our reality, and that what our belief system is can truly affect what shows up on the outside in our exterior. So I, I try to be very mindful of my thoughts and my feelings and what I'm right. saying, because that is spelling, speaking, you're, you're manifesting when you, when you, whether yeah. whether it's positive or whether it's negative, you're still you're still putting it into that that vibrational energy out there, and yes, uh, the law of attraction I believe wholeheartedly in. I believe like attracts like. It's one of the basic principles of our universe. I am under the belief now, and what yes. you vibrate at, you will match up to out there in the universe. So. I'm really hoping that people start, I think it's a great almost life hack in a way. If you can train, it's not easy. It's something you need to practice every day. Right. We all have an immense amount of stress and immense amount of distractions. We're all, we live in a heavily distracted right. world now. It's full of fear. It's full of negativity. I think it's designed that way. <laughs> and I yes. think that, you really have to start beginning to take control of allowing uh, things to come into your energy field and impacting you negatively or being able to recognize emotions, feel them, release them, and try to stay in a higher vibrational, you know, realm. Yes. And it's, it's, it's a, it's a daily practice for me and it's not something I'm perfect at and I'm human and I have bad days and I have days where I don't want to vibrate higher. I want to feel my negativity and I, and I do that too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I get it. You too. You know, it is like you said, I mean, we're, we're all yes. flawed. There's no, no perfect, you know, if it was, we probably That's wouldn't right. be here, you know, we were already, you know, everything we could be. You know, um, yeah, that, I think that's a, that's a great point. You know, how you live your life living mindfully. Yes. You know, I think it's really important. It really is. And it can change your whole world. If you were, it literally can change the reality in what you're living in. If you just make those adjustments, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in two weeks. It's going to be a yes. series of synchronicities and opening up that will, 
improve with time if you continue to vibrate higher, yes. ladies and gentlemen. Just get in there and yes, do it. That's right. Meditate, vibrate higher, and yes. your world will reflect what you put out to the universe for sure. And it'll attract, attract the correct it will. people. You absolutely will bring in the right people into your life for sure. Now, yeah. through your mediumship, what do you feel like has been the most eye-opening, um, life-changing um, experience that you've had thus far with your new spiritual beginnings? Like, what did you feel like, oh my gosh, this is, this is the, uh, this is changed everything for me. I, I, I have had quite a few. Um, it just came into my mind that I, I did do some, oh gosh, it's like remote viewing. Yes. Um, have you had I that happen? I've heard of remote viewing. I I just had a guest on a guest on that had experience doing remote viewing, and it was amazing. Yeah. Um, I I really liked your interview with Scott. <gasps> oh yes, Scotty. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he was he cool. Was, I liked that a lot. He was great. Yeah. Um, for me, the one that stands out is. Um, I, I think I, so sometimes like I will tend to get more come to me. That's um, like a clairvoyant, you know, picture or something if I'm already communicating. So if we're sitting down with the intent of communicating um, because, you know, for me, I had to draw, you know, some borders. I had to get some boundaries because in the beginning I was just, you know, I could feel people shaking me, waking me up at night. And I'm like, I, I I'm not going to talk to you in the middle of the night. I don't even know who, the, you know what wow. I mean? So, yeah, it's yes, wild. that's it's wild. wild. The, yeah, so you have to you have to kind of, you know, say no. This is not what I want. I'm not going to be an open channel to the entire universe. Um, so every time I sit, I say this is my intention, and I'm looking really for those who are here for my best and highest yes. good, which is my family, my friends, my teachers, my guides. Um, every once in a while, a teacher will. I, all I can say is, is they will step down. And I don't know exactly what that means, but I think they're not in the, in this realm where we're communicating. Typically they're somewhere else and they'll come by and they'll just go, they'll start speaking through me very, very quickly. And my husband's trying to write that. It's like, blah, 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 blah. It's like so fast, but they have the most amazing things to say. They're the ones that are, they usually shift my perspective back. If I'm, you know, if I'm struggling with something or this, they'll be like, Nope, you're good. This, you know, that kind of thing. Um, that's always impactful for me. Um, but the remote viewing I had during a communication was being um, over a group of small, like round homes. Mm -hmm. And I knew that's where I lived. It was a, a Native American um, lifetime. And I could see them as if I was just flying over them, you know, and I could see them. And then I remember thinking like, oh, yeah, up that hill. I remember that hill. I remember the river, you know, there's things like that. Just brief. There wasn't there was no one there that spoke to me. I just saw that. Wow. What about anything negative? Have you had anything of uh, lower vibrational or negative try and communicate with you or through you or any, any experiences with the, the other side? You know, I have, but they weren't um, anything, you know, you know, I'm not really a believer in evil or that kind of thing, but um, I think there are mischievous spirits yes. out there that Trickster. They think, Oh, look at this. I'm coming in. Yeah. I'm coming in. Like, so I've had exper experiences where, I don't recognize who's trying mm -hmm. to talk, who's trying and, and if I'm using my body. It's like, this is, it's very yes. personal, yes. you know? So um, I'm very careful, and, but which is part of the reason I don't do readings for people. I mean, it's, it's, these are, these are spirits that I know that come through, you know? Um, so if I don't recognize somebody, I have a sense, this is someone just messing around. I just shut it down. I just don't do oh, it. That's great. And I also believe that if you don't believe in, evil and you don't 
it's not really on your radar. I don't believe you're going to bring that into your energy. Like I do believe your belief systems really do um, have that great of an impact on onto what you're going to connect with. And I think that if you think about the darker yes. stuff and the more evil or whatever you want to say, yes. I think you open yourself up to that energy. And I think you're going to manifest something like that for yourself. And I think if you understand that it truly is about love and about being accepted and being compassionate, I feel like that is the energy that you're going to bring into your world. You know, right. that is, it's a, it's almost like that creates yes. a boundary, you know? Yes. yes. So one of the things that my um, spirit friends have said to me is that they'll say your white light. Mm -hmm. So nothing's going to get through the white light that you're surrounded by. Like there's nothing, anybody that's going to try to, yes. you're good. But I still have the point of saying like, there's always a soul on the other side who's deciding who gets through and who doesn't, oh, interesting. you know, because, mm -hmm. yeah, because they, they're a gatekeeper. They're called the gatekeeper. And, and, um, you know, sometimes when I'm, when I'm communicating, I can like, it's, it's almost like the whole room is like filled with spirit. Like, it's like, it's, it's, I don't even know if I'm seeing this with my, my third eye or how I'm seeing, but it's like, it's glittering. And I'll say, Oh, there are a lot of people here. And I know, and it's like, they're, they, you know, everyone wants to come through, you know, imagine being on the other side and you're like, I want to let my daughter know. I want to let my, my husband know. I mean, it's like that, you know, and I, I feel for them. I get that. Um, and they do, if they find, if they see an open channel, they're going to try to come through and speak. And that's why in the beginning I had issues with, I mean, I, I used to do yoga and, uh, and I would be laying on my, on my mat at the end and, and, and suddenly someone would start talking to me and I'd be like, okay, <laughs> let's not do this right now. You know, it's because they see the open channel. That is so fascinating to me. It really is. What kind of advice do you have for somebody that is is interested in stepping into their own spiritual journey? Where do you feel like people should begin? I would meditate. Um, even if you can only do five minutes, whatever you can do, you know, just sit by yourself. And as you meditate, as you begin to say, you know, is it, I'm looking for assistance from my spirit guide. Um, there are various spirit guides we have throughout our life. There's typically one that stays. Mm -hmm. And to say, I'm looking for someone to help me with this. I want to open up at the appropriate rate for me. Um, because I did open up too fast. Mm -hmm. I got a, I had right where my uh, third eye is, I had an egg on my head. It was like it physically manifested on me because... It, it just came out really fast. And that was during the times that I was able to, I was seeing a lot of things and that's how it went. And it was fine. I mean, it went away and, you know, it was fine, but I, I just, I was super excited about it all, you know? So I dove in. I mean, there's two ways you can look at that. Most people would be super, a lot of people have a lot of fear surrounding things like this. You know, we are fearful mm -hmm. creatures that if we don't understand something that seems to be our first go-to is creating mm -hmm. fear around it, which that's right. a whole nother discussion in our. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's also an easy way out to yes. say, Oh, I'm not going to do that. That's a yes. bad thing. And if you do that, it's writing off any kind of, you know, experience that you might have, yes. you know, um, I do think it's helpful if you have someone to take this journey yes. with, you know, and people to talk to about it. You know, at the spiritualist churches is, is really like some of the people that you'd meet there um, are helpful. You know, they know a lot because there are all kinds of mediums. I there. mean, I'm I've never actually heard of a spiritual spiritualist church. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to look it up and see if there's one in my area, even just to go and experience it. Yes. You know, I'm completely open to that. So. I would do that. Um, yeah, why yeah. not? It's yeah. fun. It really is. And it doesn't feel heavy. People clap for the medium. You know, and they're like, it's not, um, it's just not heavy. Yeah. You know, like growing up Catholic, it's always very like buttoned up. And uh, 
it doesn't feel like that. And they, they sing and, you know, it's, 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 it's pretty like a pretty joyful place. Well, I will definitely check that out. I, I, I find, I'll, I'll bet you'd be an, an eye opening experience. So I'm, I'm, I'm in, you got me. Um, why don't we talk a little bit about your book and what people can expect and the story of your book? And, and why don't we, why don't we start talking about before we were born? Okay. So I was a writer before, before I became a medium. Oh. So that was not new. However, I, as we were having these experiences, I said to my husband, I'm like, I need to write about some of this. Like, this is like, we were just like, you know, wow, like everything had changed for us. You know, and mostly it was, I don't have to be as afraid, you know, I'm not, I, I'm not as, you know, that's huge. Um, and also, you know, my grief lesson, yes. because I'm talking to people, it's like, we can't be grief around. It really is, de you know, debilitating. And I, I could feel all of that. My, everything about who I was lightened yes. up and I, and I left the practice of law. Like I was, it was a big leap of faith to just say, I'm not doing this anymore. It's just, it wasn't a good energy for me. Um, so all that was happening, but, um, I kind of like, I, I you know, it's interesting. Like people say, oh, they wanted you to write this, the spirits or whatever. And I'm like, not at all. Like I mentioned it and said, I'm going to write about this. And they said, okay, <laughs> if you want, you know, do what you want. Like, we're not asking you to give messages to people. We're not asking anything yeah. from you. We're here to support you and love you. And that's all. So I actually wrote this book first as a screenplay. Um, yeah. So I really outlined it out. But anyway, I, I wrote it into um, the novel. And what I did is I took the concepts that I had learned, um, essentially, um, about reincarnation, um, the fact that we're, we're born many times, and um, spirit communication and what those experiences are like. And I put them into a fictional book. So this book is a novel. It's a story about two people who, two souls who inc incarnate together on purpose. Oh. And they're doing this throughout different lifetimes. So um, the first chapter is, 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 you know, I always say get past the first chapter because they're in the spirit world. And that's kind of a tough subject for people to how they feel about that. I tried to keep it short that way, but this is how the story had to begin. Um, so they are born, the, the, the female wants to be born. And um, in this case, I say male and female. Honestly, the whole, the, there's, there's, I feel like there's a lot of like gender neutrality around all of the spiritual stuff. So I'm not making a, any kind of comment on that. But um, in this story, I wrote it as a romantic story. And she wants to be born to a particular woman who was her mom in a past mm -hmm. life. And he's not really wanting to be born again at this point, but he says, I'll follow you. And uh, so he does. And he, you know, as part of um, their planning to be born, they meet with their spirit guides and um, they discuss this. And um, his guide says, pick another mother mm -hmm. because she wa he wants to be born on the same street as his soulmate because he's afraid he won't meet her otherwise. And they're like, she was the woman that he chose was a drug addict and an alcoholic. And they, they told him like, rethink this, but he didn't. And so he's born close to her, but he has fetal alcohol syndrome. And, you know, so he has, he has um, a lot of struggle in his life, but as he's a little, little boy, he wanders into her yard and she sort of takes him in and they become this like little inseparable pair and she cares for him and his fam her family ultimately, you know, really is his family because um, his mom is never really around. So it's really following these people and um, these souls, but in their very real lives here, it's not a romance novel, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to make it easy. It's not easy, you know? <laughs> so that's what it is. You know, and one of them is going to pass. I'll tell you that. And then the other one is going to have to figure out how to talk to the other one. Well, I will definitely put it in my show notes and I highly recommend people picking that up. I love the story that it revolves around happening, pre-incarnating here to the planet, because that's a story that should be told more often that we are, we do make 
some sort of negotiation when we come down here. We yeah. do have a set of parameters that are going to happen to us um, that we're aware of before, and we sign we sign up for it. However terrible it may be when we get here, you know. I you know yes. you often wonder about since I've been on this path, I've always often wondered about people who come here and they end up having very terrible lives, you know, maybe health problems, yeah. maybe they lose an appendage, maybe, you know, who knows, my own father lost his left arm uh, when he was mm. young. And I often think about, I wonder if that was something he knew he yeah. that was predestined in his negotiation before he came and, and incarnated down here. He's no longer with us. He's, I'm, he's up uh, there, you know, he's, he's around, but, um, yeah. we do make a, uh, a, a contract of sorts to come down and live a certain life. And although we do have free will, there are parameters that are going to happen within our lives that we are well aware of before we get here. So I love that you start the story there because I think if more people were in the loop and 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 the knowing that 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 there is a um, a soul purpose, a soul contract, a a negotiation of sorts before we get here, that leads us to the life and the lessons that we're supposed to learn while we're here. And um, right, it's it's. Uh, I am hoping that more and more people open themselves to this type of spirituality to awakening. I feel like the world more than ever needs this kind of information now more than ever. It feels very, feels very dystopian out there, Kathleen. It feels very, it does. very dystopian out there. And we are going down a path of, I think, fear and hate rather than going down the path of love and enlightenment. And, and yes. it is um, dangerous times out there. I'm, I'm just trying to spread the love, spread the light, and hopefully yes. change people's perspectives. Even if they, you don't have to believe everything, but maybe investigate right. and do a little bit of um, internal investigation on your own or start listening to the universe a little bit, start opening up to your intuition and opening up to other ways of being. And I feel like it could really benefit anybody who starts down this path, anybody. Yeah, I agree. It's, if you could take down that wall of yes. fear and really look at yourself as a soul with immense capacity yes. I mean, I don't think we have any idea the depth of our own potential. We, yes. And it's sad that people don't, don't, they just say, nope, it's this, it's this. And you do this and you go to hell, you do this, you go to heaven. And meanwhile, you know, they're okay with committing atrocities yes. and doing terrible things. Yes. And, you know, if, if everybody just sort of tried to tap in um, and figure out like what feels yes. right, how does this yes. feel to you? Because- if this, you know, if, if something, if you're injuring or hurting someone else and you're okay with that, you need to tap in and figure that out because that's, that's not spirit. You know, that says to me when, when somebody is able to do that, and I don't care if you're hurting another human or even people that hurt animals, you know, there is no head heart connection there. There is no head heart connection there. And yeah. You need to start moving into the, your heart center more and moving out of, I mean, at the end of the day, if we're not listening into our internal being, I feel like we are, we could easily be led to do atrocities when I feel like humans are pretty easily pro programmable kind of beings. We just are. We're easily influenced by what we see, by who we listen yeah. to. Um, all types of things. And I think, I think they know that. <laughs> and I, and I right. think that's one of the reasons why they do keep us distracted and they do keep us full of fear because if we were able to live lives where we could actually reflect on ourselves and our inner 
um, world and tap into that, we are so much more powerful than we think we are. We are. We are powerful yes, beings. Are. And if people were to start taking their power back, we could literally transform this world. Yes. Right. And there are people that don't want that. And there are people that do not want that. They want to keep us separated, divide us, divide us and distract us from what really matters. I've said this before too. We are all fellow travelers to the grave. We are all here for a purpose to expand, to grow, to love, and to um, fulfill our soul purpose in this lifetime. And maybe you're not born to awaken in this lifetime. You were certain born you were certainly born here to learn life lessons in this 3D plane. And yes. And it always goes back to love, doesn't it? Always, always. love. That's it. Always. And yeah. And you don't have to learn everything no. all at once. You know, just to make it, if you want your life to be a little bit better, you know, you just kind of tap in and you listen and just, you know, some of these experiences that some of us are having and just say, what, what resonates yes. with me? Like if, if the things that I, that I've said to you about my experiences, if they don't resonate with other people, I would just say, then let yes. go. You don't have to, you don't need to believe anything I say. You don't have to have the experiences I've had. I'm offering it so that maybe you will have less grief and you will have less yes. fear you know, which is, which is why I wrote this book the way I wrote it, because I want people to read it and say, I feel like I've had people say, this feels like I'm remembering yes. when I read it. And I'm like, that's it. Because that's how I felt when I was started to open up. I'm like, I'm remembering this. Info As the information came to me, it's like, I somehow knew this, but I have forgotten yes. it. There is, I, I have these same very instances with me where I have an inner knowing in me that I can explain. Like, I, I know this to be true and I have no idea why I know this to be true, but I have an inner knowing. And we all have an yeah. inner knowing if we listen to it and rely on it. it. It almost is never going to point you in the wrong direction. You have to just tune in to what you're resonating with and what you're feeling in your heart yep. center. And, and it will almost guide you where you're supposed to be. Yeah. I think that's why yes, we have it. I agree. I mean, and, and I, yeah. I as well, since I've been on my own personal journey, have a lot less fear in my life. I do. I, I do. Uh, I no longer fear my death. And I used to for years. Um, I, I no yep. longer feel, I, I feel that I am a being of light. I feel that I am going to, I have always existed and I will always exist and that there is other dimensions out there that I will, will experience within my existence of being a light being. And yes. I'm on, I completely totally understand that I am here to learn, to grow, to love and expand my consciousness. And yes, Part of me doing this podcast is my desire to, like like you said, not everybody is, it's not going to resonate with everyone, but if it resonates with anyone and they take it upon themselves to right. do their own stepping into this world, I feel like I have done a service of sorts. Yes. You know? You have. It is everyone's path is their own path. It's really none of my business what your path is, you know, but right. you can open people's minds and change their perspectives with stories like your own, where you have stepped into this entirely different realm where you are able to communicate with your loved ones, with your spirit guides, with archangels and it is a very real very tangible and it, it is a capacity in which we all may have to a certain degree maybe not to the we're all not going to be trans mediums but we certainly are going to have the ability to tap into our own inner knowing 
Oh, absolutely. And everybody has yes. gifts. Everybody does, you know, really. I think we all have the ability to communicate with spirit. I think it's mostly shut down out of yes. fear. But I mean, you know, little kids, I think little kids are seeing spirits, yes. you know, you know, I think it's, we learn you're not supposed to do that and it just gets, you know, pushed down. Uh, but I don't think there's, there's nothing exceptional about me. You know, there's no reason that I can do these things. It's just, this is my own personal experience, but um, you know, I don't know. I don't know how to how to even sum that up, but I can just say that if I can do this, other people can do similar yes. things. You know, I mean, we're all just you know, like you said, we're beings yes. of light. You know, and 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 for me, like what you said about like remembering that about that, it's really remembering who yes. you are. And if you remember that, it's like that is that that's a mantra right there. That's like that'll keep you going every yes. day. Like just remember who you are. Remember right. who you are. You know, and, and that's, that's enough. If that's all I took from learning to communicate with spirit is, is just that, like I'm a being yep. of light. Um, and, and to the, and, and I think to varying degrees, we can choose it. It's like, this is who we are, but some people are like, nope, I don't want to embrace myself in those terms. And they trudge, trudge, trudge through life. And it's yes. hard. And I think, a shift can happen, but it is, you know, we do, we do have to have intention. Agreed. Intention is a mm. big thing in this world. If you have the the right intention with the right energy, uh, how do I want to say, it, it, if you have the right intention towards something and the right energy, you are much more capable of manifesting, creating it and living that. If you have that focused intention in mind when you are no matter what you're you're going for whether it be living with more abundance whether it be living with more health whether it be wanting to be um love yourself and and you'll find love coming into your life it is really about intention and the energy that you are presenting to the 3d world that you're swimming in yes i mean yeah. And, and, and with that, <laughs> that was a good wrap up. That was very nice. I love what I you mean, said. I mean, I really am learning mm -hmm. and I'm, I am doing my best to put out information in a way that is not going to lead to somebody being fearful, but leading to somebody being more curious about their own existence. It doesn't feel like there's yes. a lot of curiosity about the big questions in life anymore. It feels like everyone's just working and making money and then getting sick and dying, <laughs> you know, it, it, the way in yeah. which human beings are living their life on this planet to me is leading us into an unfulfilled. Um, a lot of us are mentally unwell. A lot of us are physically unwell. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we are not living the lives on this planet that we were meant to live. We are just not. Right. And and how can we when we are in a situation where somebody has to work three jobs just to sustain a little bit of a life or I mean, life on this 3D planet now is becoming increasingly difficult and hard. Yes. And I've heard other mediums and other channelers say that when people incarnate here, they kind of know what they're getting into because apparently Earth is a very hard life to live that that it is a planet filled with a lot of despair and a lot of violence and a lot of chaos and a lot of you know things of lower vibrational nature but if everyone yeah. were to kind of vibrate and lift themselves out of that i feel like we could change the consciousness of this planet for a higher uh, way of being I'm doing what I conscious, yeah. you know, I'm doing what I can, Kathleen. You know, this is all I can do. <laughs> I, I think you're doing great, Christy. And I tell you, it, it's working in a lot of directions here because you're meeting people who are, you know, you, you're, you know, you have a very open I mind, do. you know, you're, you're very, you know, welcoming to information 
you know, and, and so you're hearing things, but as you're hearing them, you're spreading it out to the, to other people who are listening and you're, you're, I want to say you're a soft place to land, yeah. you know what I mean? For people, for people who need that. People need a place to go. I feel like there are not a lot of lights out there in the world. And I feel like if you could spread a little bit of light out there, it's only going to be a positive thing, you know? And and I'm not here telling anybody how to think or how to feel or what they should believe. And I'm certainly not telling anybody I'm right, you're wrong, none of that. You know, right. I am presenting yeah. stories from, from people like you who have a story to tell that are not coming from a place of anything other than speaking your truth. And mm -hmm. if I think truth impacts people more than anything else does, more than fear, if somebody believes you're telling them the truth, they have a much more better chance of opening their minds and, and, and thinking to themselves, hmm, maybe there is something to this. Maybe I should try and open my eyes to another perspective that doesn't involve the one I was pre-programmed with since I was a child. And I believe a lot of us are yeah. pre-programmed to believe certain things and we are incapable of branching out beyond what is mainstream, what is accepted as normal, and what is accepted as truth or science or whatever you want to say in today's mainstream uh, thought that we have going on currently. And I want to pierce that bubble of what is mainstream and what is thought of as normal, because there is clearly more going on in our world than just being born, working till the day you die. And, and, and I mean, we are here to do so much more. There's, there's, we are here to experience creativity and joy and love and our passion and our soul purpose. And we're supposed to be doing other things with our time other than being distracted by fear and anger and things that are not serving our yes. purpose whatsoever. And Or people around yes, us. Yes. So we are, um, I'm doing my best and I know you are too. We're up over an hour here. I really enjoyed our conversation, Kathleen. Like, I think you're a light. I hope you keep uh, doing what you're doing. Write more books. Speak your truth. And I would love to have you back on the show to have another one of our conversations. Asking life's big questions. I think it's a. I think it's an interesting topic, and I feel that uh, we did it right today. We had a great conversation. It was really fun, and it was. It just felt. It really uh, felt good, you know, exchanging ideas, and you know. I, I have to tell you, I have been very blessed, and the universe has been serving me up some of the most amazing people on my show. I don't know how or where they're coming from, but they're coming in, and I've really just been so lucky with everybody I've had. And uh, super grateful. And I want to continue to do this for as long as possible. I really do. I, I am obsessed with all things spiritual. I really am. Well, that's awesome. What an exciting way I, to live. <laughs> I hope so. Really? My really? life is, really? you know, life is not perfect by far, but I truly yes. want to um, continue to do something that speaks to my heart. And this podcast really does. So. Here we are. I'm going to keep good. doing That's... it. Good. Please on do. that note, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up on today's episode of Fate. I want to thank Kathleen for coming on board in our conversation. Thank you so much, my friend. And uh, uh, we'll see you. you again, guys. Thanks so much. Bye. And that is a wrap on this episode of Fate from Atheism to Enlightenment. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. 
I absolutely loved having that conversation with Kathleen. It is such a, I don't know, blessing, I guess, to have these types of conversations with people. And I truly do hope that I am making some sort of impact. I know they impact me greatly on every single show. I am learning and I am understanding more and more about spirituality, about the nature of our reality. And I, I honestly believe that I am um, becoming a de- much more deeply spiritual than I have ever been in my life. And I'm hoping it inspires other people to go out and and investigate investigate things on your own. You're certainly not going to learn everything that you need to know in life from this show. (laughs) I wish that were true, Um, but you're not. You're going to have to do your own digging, um, your own meditations, your own research, and figure out what resonates with you. I do know this, that there is truly so much more going on within our reality than I ever had been exposed to before in all my years on this planet. And that as much as I have endured through my health crisis, the emotional, the physical, all of it, in a way it has brought me to this in my life, which has been a blessing. And Maybe I signed up for this. Maybe this was supposed to be my journey. Maybe I was always supposed to lose about a decade of my life struggling with my health. Maybe, you know, maybe this was my path. It was, you know, maybe there are no mistakes. You know, I I don't know. I'm still learning. I'm still uh, expanding my mind. I am very open-minded to much of this because of the series of events that have occurred in my life, I certainly don't think that I would have been able to receive this information had I not been sort of stripped from everything that I was, my ego, my sense of self, my confidence, everything has kind of gotten stripped down on me. And it really allows you to be much more humble and it allows you to be much more open to listening to somebody else speak and in, in, in hearing them and not thinking that you have it all figured out because I kind of was living in that plane for most of my life. I had a pretty hefty ego. <laughs> I still don't have a small ego, but it is much, much more tame and under control and and um, humble than it used to be. And um, I think spirituality has brought me that. It has brought me a lot of gifts, like being less fearful, being um, more loving, and understanding much more about who I am and wanting to learn more about who I am. I, I I actually think I had, well, just so you guys know, all of these shows that I'm putting out weekly, I've recorded them, recorded them um, a while ago. I've been recording for a while while, while I was on hiatus. I was recording, I was recording. And um, I put out the Phil Webster um, episode um, a, a couple of weeks ago, and all of these recordings are in not, they're not in any real order. So I might record somebody and put it right out or pull something up that I recorded in June and put that out. Um, and the reason why I'm saying this is because Kathleen was actually the first person that even let me know that there was a spiritualist church. I, I didn't even know that was a thing. Um, and then I had, I recorded Phil Webster after Kathleen, a a month or so after. And he had mentioned that the first time he had really stepped into his, his uh, spiritualist church, that is when he found out he was a medium 
as well. And I think it's kind of inspired me to go to a spiritualist church and check it out and see what it is. I'm super curious. And I live in LA. I am sure there's a spiritualist church in Hollywood. <laughs> I'm sure there's maybe several around the LA area, I'm sure. But um, I'm going to find one and I'm going to go in and see what it is, see what it brings me, see if maybe I'll get some sort of nugget of information that I would have never gotten otherwise without stepping into the spiritual church. Maybe it'll open up a new path for me. Maybe I'll meet, you know, some new friends. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm certainly feeling isolated in my newfound spiritual ways. I'm, I'm much less um, outgoing and I'm much more of a recluse now and I'm much more um, in tune to just being alone and sitting with me. And although I do find myself being lonely at times, I also have never been more at peace in a weird way. Um, I think I do need to find a balance and get back out there and start living life. I feel like I have been on the sidelines for a while, mainly because of my health. Um, but I would like to rejoin and come back better than ever, but a new version of me um, that is going to serve me better in many, many ways My in my relationships, within myself, uh, within a, a community that I'm hoping to find and, and join and um, all of that. I uh, Going back to the episode, I really have been just learning so much by talking to people like Kathleen. I'm finding that the being like-minded, being of the same, um, I don't know if you want to say vibration or if you want to say mindset, but to be able to talk to people about things that really do sound very fantastical and, and quite frankly, some people might say crazy, um, being able to be on the same level with somebody else and have these deep conversations that are kind of hard to find in other areas of my life. I enjoy them. I learn from them. And I, um, I, I, I'm looking forward to having more of them. I'd love to have Kathleen back on the show. I think she has a wealth of knowledge and I think that she has a lot to offer. I truly think if you're looking for a good read, you should pick up her book, Before We Were Born, by Kathleen Reddy Diane. I will put it in the show notes, and um, I'll put it under Amazon, and then I'll also put it under O Books, which if you are looking for... Um, books that will point you in the right direction. If you're interested in spirituality and you're finding it hard to get the resources or find the information, and I know the internet's out there and all that jazz and everything's readily at hand, but there is a publishing company that kind of specializes in spirituality and spirit-based spirit, spirit -based books. And there is a wealth of knowledge on there alone. And it's called O Books. And I will also put that in the show notes. You can find Kathleen's book there as well. I highly encourage you to purchase it off that website. It is, uh, I, I love it. I've been working with them for a while now and um, they're just, they're just amazing. So I, I can't highly recommend them enough. So if you're looking for information about spirituality, whether it be meditation or psychedelics or um, mediumship or a good novel that will take you on a journey from preconception to birth in a spiritual way that will light, um, enlighten you in a way that you never would have thought of otherwise, pick up Kathleen's book. Um, on that note, gang, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Thank you 
for listening, for watching. And if you are enjoying what I'm doing here at all, please tell a friend, like, support the show in any way you can, subscribe, share it. I need your help to get this out to as many people as possible. I'm not that great at social media. Speaking of social media, I do have an Instagram account. I would lo love it if you would follow me. It's um, at Fate Podcast. It's F period, A period, T period, E period podcast. Go ahead and follow me. Let me know what you're thinking about the show. I honestly don't have a huge following right now. I'm okay with that. I am following my inner universe and it is going to take me there. I have no doubt. Um, anyways, gang, we will see you next week on Fate from Atheism to Enlightenment. My name's Christy Busby and welcome to your fate, everyone. I'll see you next week. <laughs>